Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. If you have been following this channel and many other channels who have talked about the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset and how they have openly said they are exploiting the whole virus situation to bring in all of these new changes and as it is clear from watching and going through the World Economic Forum's website and their recent Davos agenda last week, it's clear even though they are called a World Economic Forum, they are more like a climate change forum because everything they want to do is all based around climate change. Now, there are two reports out today that clearly show you the agenda of these world leaders, many of them unelected leaders, and how they want to not only exploit the virus situation to put us all into continuous lockdowns and health passports, etc, etc, but they want to combine that with their climate change plans. And basically what I believe they want to do is take all of these proposals, restrictions, health passports, lockdowns, and basically swap them or maybe double them up for a climate change crisis, virus crisis agenda for the future forever basically and here are two articles out today that talk about this here we have one in the spectator are you ready for the climate lockdowns it's only a matter of time is it really with a society as compliant as we have today i suppose anything is possible it says here as the global climate elite push eating bugs and staying home to save the earth on the masses, it's worth posing the question, what will be adequate? With the World Economic Forum in Davos approaching in April, we're going to start hearing terms such as climate equity and climate reset, a play on the World Economic Forum's Great Reset. More frequently, we'll probably also start to hear calls for climate lockdowns. I know, right now that sounds completely preposterous, but don't these cookie ideas always find a way to bleed into the mainstream? It says here in The Spectator. Now, this has been, these climate, the idea of climate lockdowns has been mentioned a few times over the last six months. One example is here in socialeurope.eu. Avoiding a climate lockdown. It goes on to say how the earth is in imminent danger and states under a climate lockdown, governments would limit private vehicle use, ban consumption of red meat and impose extreme energy saving measures. All sounds familiar, all very popular topics of the World Economic Forum, the banning of meat. I've heard them talk about that many times. Now you see why people like Bill Gates owned most of the farmland in the USA while simultaneously investing millions into lab-grown fake meat products. And then we have on the propaganda BBC, we have this report. Mark Carney, climate crisis deaths will be worse than COVID. It says here, the world is heading for mortality rates equivalent to the COVID crisis every year by mid-century unless... Action is taken now, according to Mark Carney. Well, you, you know, if you look at the mortality rates of many countries, there's not that much difference to most years over the last 20 years. So, you know, what's your point? Canadian Mark Carney used to be the governor of the Bank of England. Now he has swapped his financial hat for a climate change hat. He is now the United Nations Envoy for Climate Action and Finance. He told the BBC that while there were parallels between the pandemic and climate change, damage to the environment and ecosystems has the potential to cause many more deaths. The poor people who watch and listen to the BBC and believe it, you know, there are people out there, I believe, that think when they watch the BBC that they're telling them the truth. Every day they have Project Fear pushed onto them through the radio, through the TV, the news. And now they are being told that the world itself, the environment around them is out to get them. The article continues. It says, one of the biggest issues is you cannot self-isolate from climate, Mark Carney says. That is not an option. We cannot retreat in and wait out climate change. It will just get worse, he told Talking Business Asia, the climate change challenge. And he goes on. And you can guess what, what it involves. You know, it's all that kind of build back better rhetoric you know, now is the opportunity where we can make a difference, we can make a change, a great reset, all of that 
mantra, all of that psycho babble. So you see the game. You can see that the powers that be want to keep you in lockdown, then transfer in the whole climate change issue thing on top of it and try and restrict us down into these worn out, jabbed up, health barcode, passport holding, bug eating, carbon counting vessels, basically, that are stuck at home and have no life. That's pretty much what these people want. And if not, well, I'm not seeing any alternative visions of the future being offered up by these unelected leaders, these people. And Mark Carney, again, you know, nobody voted for him to be the Bank of England governor, and nobody's voted for him to be this climate action man, whatever he's called. See, this is what happens when the public are too compliant. You know, the public, they've been wearing soft shoes for too long. They've not really, so many of them just can't get it into their head that the government may not have your best interests at heart. You know, it is possible, you know. They're not the greatest people. I mean, just look at all of the politicians over the years who have been found out to be guilty of, of corruption and lying and, and all sorts. I mean, the governments have seen the mass implication of lockdowns in the majority of countries. And these lockdowns have been received and obeyed by the public without too much fuss. And as it says here in the Spectator article, once your leaders enforce one under the guise of public health, they will not simply set aside their power to do so again. Again, as I've always said, the choice is up to the public. If they wanted to stop, they have to collectively stand up and say no, enough is enough. Governments are there to serve the people collectively. So if you collectively say no, then it will be so. But you have to be united. And that's the problem, as the media, with the help of the governments around the world, are actively putting out stories, articles that divide people. It's deliberate propaganda, the oldest trick in the book. Check out this clip during the rounds of another tyrant, Andrew Como, the governor of New York. Government, government. This is not a government control issue. It doesn't really matter what laws we, we put out because government can't enforce any of these laws, right? We have a, a regulation. You must wear a mask. How do I make 19 million people wear a mask? I can't. I couldn't make that one fella who I ran into wear a mask, right? Everything we're doing is basically voluntary on behalf of people, right? Uh, the state government, local government, federal government can't really, doesn't have the power to enforce stay-at-home orders. If 19 million people said, I'm, I'm going out today, uh, they would go out. So you, you can see there, they know it. They know they have to coerce the public into these situations. They can't actually physically control that many people. And more people need to realize and wake up to the fact that they collectively really do have the power. So share this video, get it out there, and let's get people talking. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to hugotalks.com so that I can keep in contact with you if YouTube delete this channel at some point in the future. And I'll see you tomorrow.